Hi guys, it has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous day here in paradise in the end times. Just a little bit smoky still, a little bit smoky here on this otherwise fine late summer day, Wednesday, August 30th, 2017. So it is Wednesday, which is time of course for my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire and uh, biblical floods and the whole bit of them. So I'm proud to say for the first time in three weeks I think it's safe to say whether the mainstream media realizes it or not the number one story on the planet. Good God, the new the new solar eclipse of the week would of course be uh, Hurricane Harvey. Hurricane Harvey which is still unleashing its fury down there in Texas. As far as I know, so far my own little uh, nest egg in a floodplain in Texas once again your old eco-Nazi real estate investor has narrowly dodged another bullet. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So uh, I have been keeping my eyes on uh, Hurricane Harvey and on the news. And believe it or not, actually a couple of articles unbelievably uh, drawing the connection between Hurricane Harvey and we see her and you know what Hurricane Harvey's size and impact points to climate change. This is from good old NPR. Hurricane Harvey's size and impact points to climate change. Uh, Harvey bears the marks of climate change as warmer waters in the Gulf of Mexico and rising sea levels make rain-heavy storms like Harvey more likely in the future. And uh, so they interviewed here this climat climatologist uh, let's see, Christopher Joyce. Oh, this is NPR's science correspondent. Christopher Joyce connecting the, the dots. So what is the bottom line? Okay, let's just uh, let's take it away, Christopher Joyce. As you know, there have always been big storms, but climate change is causing some other things to change, and most important here is the ocean. It is warming up, and when you heat up, heat is energy, and so if there's more heat, there's more energy for storms to feed off of, and so the world's oceans are already on average have warmed up for well over a degree over the past century and in addition the Gulf of Mexico has been crazy the last few weeks. I mean it's been two or three degrees more warmer than usual. So you add it all together it's been four degrees warmer than normal in the Gulf. I wish I knew whether he was talking about Celsius or Fahrenheit and that is a lot of energy. And the other effect of heat, it causes ocean water to evaporate and rise up. So with every extra degree in ocean temperature you add, that produces a heck of a lot of water vapor, otherwise soon to be known as rain. Uh, I think Houston, good God, I mean, last I heard they'd had over two feet with up to another two feet 
uh, could still hit them. I don't know what it looks like down there today. So here is, uh, <clears throat> I'm not, this is the French news service uh, looking at the same story. Cyclones and climate change connecting the dots. Hurricane Harvey has left a trail of destruction in its wake and scientists say global warming means that the worst ones are becoming ever stronger. Uh, okay, take it away, AFP. Scientists freely acknowledge they don't know everything about how global warming affects hurricanes like the one pummeling southeast Texas, but what they do know is enough to keep them up at night. The amplifying impacts, the feedback loops, the amplifying impacts of sea level rise, warming oceans, and hotter air, all incontrovertible consequences of climate change is basic physics, they say. Um, <clears throat> so there you go, and uh, basic physics. Yes. When it comes to cyclones and climate change, there are many points of near universal agreement between climatologists, one of which is the consequence of warming seas. This is some climatologist, Emmanuel. <clears throat> the most lethal act aspect of hurricanes wherever they occur in the world is storm surge. It is physically the same phenomenon as a tsunami except that in the, in the hurricane's case it is excited by wind rather than a seafloor shaken by an earthquake. But guys, uh, I, I know it's hard to find uh, between all of this uh, overkill on Hurricane Harvey. Good God Almighty, Houston, Texas lo looks like goddamn uh, Tucson, Arizona. It looks like the middle of a desert compared to that shit storm. Not brewing, blowing full force over there in Asia. Uh, as I say, you have to look to find this little story. Floods in India, Bangladesh, and Nepal kill 1,200 and leave millions homeless. Authorities say this year's monsoon flooding is one of the worst in the region in years. And apparently it's still, the water's still rising. <clears throat> At least 1,200 people have been killed and millions have been left homeless. Can you say climate change refugees? Millions of climate change refugees today. As I am reading this, all of the predictions from these doom and gloomers particularly out of Bangladesh, my God, is here. The, the predictions, the no-shit Sherlock predictions have come true. Um, <clears throat> following devastating floods that have hit this week in India, Bangladesh, and Nepal in one of the worst flooding disasters to have affected the region in years, International aid agencies say thousands of villages have been cut off by flooding with people being deprived of food and clean water for days. Uh, South Asia, Asia suffers from frequent flooding during the monsoon season, but authorities have said this year's floods have been much worse. Uh, in India, so far they've pulled 500 people out of the water. 
dead and the ongoing floods have so far affected 17 million people in India. Good God, have you seen uh, those pictures out of Mumbai? Uh, good God. Uh, in neighboring Bangladesh, at least 134 people have died in flooding, which is believed to have submerged one third of the country. One third of the country of Bangladesh today is under water. Under water. Uh, <clears throat> it says so more then this is more than one and a half million acres of farmland have been flooded out and more than 25,000 acres of farmland in Bangladesh have been completely washed away. Uh, Bangladesh already uh, lost around a million tons of rice from flooding in April. Quote, farmers are left with nothing, not even with clean drinking water. And then don't forget the goddamn uh, ground zero of what is unfolding on this planet. Good old Nepal. 150 people at least have been killed and 90,000 homes 90,000 homes have been destroyed. The disaster in Asia comes as most headlines have focused on the floods in Houston, Texas, which authorities there have described as, quote, unprecedented. But from floods to wildfires, and all I got to do is look out of this chair, although I hear that this smoke that I am seeing is actually coming from Oregon and California. Uh, so I guess the big, the big burn is blowing off in there. And this is, of course, this holocaust, this out of control inferno. Uh, burning up there in British Columbia, just a few miles north of where I'm sitting. Over three million acres of British Columbia gone, at, gone up into smoke as blazes merge into largest ever wildfire in Western Canada. They keep saying the largest ever wildfire in Western Canada. That, that implies that there's been a bigger wildfire in Canada than this one. Maybe that uh, Fort McMurray fire a few years ago was bigger, but three million acres? A anyway, uh, let's check in with a little bit of this. So what we have going on up there is 19, 19 different wildfires have merged into one massive forest fire that authorities said Tuesday was the largest ever recorded in British Columbia. As I say, it doesn't mention where there's ever been a bigger one in Canada. Uh, so this fire is now the, the burning out of control. As of yesterday, this one fire was up to 1.15 million acres. Uh, this son of a bitch spreads 80 miles or 130 kilometers from end to end and despite efforts by thousands of firefighters it is expected to continue burning for some time. A state of emergency has been in effect in British Columbia since July 7th. Uh, of course, you will not see 
the words climate change or global warming anywhere in this article or, or the vast majority of the articles on um, this fire. It's just like in that story of from India I just read you, you will not see the words climate change or global warming in those and it's damn hard to find the words climate change or global warming in all of these stories about Harvey. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit. I already went over another version of this story uh, from on Monday. This is my old buddy uh, Andrew. Oh shit! What is what is Andrew's last name? Friedman, maybe I believe Andrew Friedman from this outfit called Ashable. Uh, interpreting this no shit Sherlock study. Exxon played us all on global warming new study shows. Uh, anyway, this is a long, long involved story. But the takeaway, we already know the takeaway. And as I say, I've already been over this on Monday, is, is that this is just the, the the first time that anybody has really sat down and analyzed an in-depth analysis of Exxon and Mobile's and Exxon Mobile's internal documents versus their public statements about climate change. And uh, there, there, there is, it, it, it's talk about Rex Tillerson's um, possum in the headlights moment. It, 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 you know, this is cut and dried. That Exxon and Mobile, and come on guys, as every goddamn one of them have known as far back, at least to the 1970s, if not previous to that, all of these goddamn lion sacks of shit, their own scientists have been telling them for 40 years that burning fossil fuels will lead to catastrophic global warming. Uh, Rex Tillerson has known this. I think Rex Tillerson, when did he take over at Exxon? Back in the late 80s. Rex Tillerson knew the day he stepped into that office uh, the truth uh, about climate change. And, and, and he went right on being the same fucking lying sack of shit that he is right up today working for the lying sack of shit in chief. Uh, and guys, make no mistake about it, Rex Tillerson is on his way out. There is no way that Rex Tillerson is going to be the Secretary of State, certainly by the end of this year. And anybody who does not think this report, which it's, it's, it's great how they leave Rex Tillerson's name. He was the fucking leader of this pack of fucking planet-eating lion sacks of shit for half of these 40 years. Uh, you know, Rex Tillerson is going down uh, for whatever reason they're going to come up with. Goodbye and good riddance. But Rex Tillerson does show up in this no shit Sherlock story. <clears throat> Rex Tillerson just took the State Department back another step from acting on climate change. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's tenure has been beleaguered by waves of resignations from senior officials. I think there's a whole lot in those words. While political appointment positions remain empty, now after emerging from a one million dollar study to overall to overhaul the department's organization, Tillerson 
has decided to cut a number of what are called special envoy positions and take a wild guess. Uh, the, the number one <coughs> special envoy on the chopping block, that would be the climate change envoy, uh, who is now Todd Stern, uh, has been given his walking papers. So, what is a climate change envoy, or no longer is a climate change envoy? According to the State Department's own website, the climate change envoy, which no longer exists in the State Department under Rex Tillerson and Donald Trump, quote, is responsible for developing, implementing, and overseeing U.S. international policy on climate change. Uh, there, there you go. And of course, there is nobody anywhere in the Trump administration responsible for developing, implementing, and overseeing U.S. international policy on climate change because there is no U.S. international policy on climate change. Well, I won't say that. Uh, of course, remember I was reporting, when was it? Was it about 36 hours before uh, before Hurricane Harvey slammed into uh, slammed into the coast of Texas, that Donald Trump and and I believe it was Rick Perry. No, this was pretty much all Donald was uh, removing any analysis of climate change, you know, such as sea level rise, so on and so forth, from when planning for this $1 trillion or whatever in infrastructure spending uh, that's going to be billed to the U.S. taxpayers. I think it was on Thursday that Donald Trump said no more uh, factoring in climate change to the country's infrastructure. And then two days later, Hurricane Harvey slammed into Houston's infrastructure, not to mention all of that goddamn oil infrastructure down there on the Texas coast. Okay, from the State Department to the Environmental Protection Agency under Scott Pruitt, EPA announces it will not sponsor annual climate Leadership Awards. Uh, the U.S. The, the EPA announced it will no longer sponsor the 2018 Climate Leadership Awards program, an annual event that honors those who take action towards combating climate change. The agency also announced it will no longer sponsor the Climate Leadership Conference. Yes, the announcement, uh, the unsurprising announcement, comes as climate change skeptics in Donald Trump's administration dismantle solutions imposed by President Barack Obama administration to decrease humans' carbon footprint. There you go. This is an anonymous EPA spokesman talking to Reuters News. Quote, it should not be a surprise to anyone that we at the EPA don't plan to fund an awards ceremony on climate change. Uh, okay, moving on from the EPA to yet another U.S. agency website deletes references to climate 
change. This is now the National Institute of Health under Donald Trump deleted multiple references <coughs> to climate change on its website, continuing a trend that began when the Trump administration took charge of the .gov domain. D D D. Okay, let's go from maggots to beetles. Winter cold used to kill off forest-eating beetles. Not anymore. And so this pine bark beetle story is now not looking at the western U.S. It is looking at the uh, the tsunami of extinction brewing now in the in the east, particularly the northeast, as the eastern pine beetle, well, actually the southern pine beetle, the southeastern pine bark beetle, beginning its relentless march forward. <clears throat> Ecosystems ravaged by climate change tend to reward pests and invasive species. Stinging jellyfish thrive in warm acidic seas. Rats multiply in extreme summer heat. Disease-carrying mosquitoes find homes farther and farther each year to the north. And now the same goes for southern pine beetles, an invasive species that burrows into the trunks of conifers and lays eggs um, for nearly two decades the insects native to the southeastern United States have been ravaging woodlands in New Jersey and New York and over the next three years they could threaten forest as far north as Canada. Uh, from Canada to Ohio. Jesus, from, from Maine to Canada to Ohio could soon become suitable habitat for the beetles. And by 2060, it's just, we're fucked. Uh, quoting Radley Horton, uh, hmm, explaining this, quote, The coldest temperature of the year, which really sets the boundary for whether species can survive or not, has been warming rapidly in the eastern United States. Climate models generally project for the future as well that those really cold temperatures are going to warm a lot. Two more. I love these two stories side by side. First we have Stop blaming the sun for global warming. This is all of that tired old, you know, that tired old saw that it's the sun. The sun is what is responsible for climate change. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. For, uh, I hate to break the news to you, like I, I'm sure anybody is going, any of these head up their fucking ass clueless moron climate deniers are going to pay a, I, I can only imagine what the comments sound like to this. The earth is getting warmer and warmer and scientists are now essentially unanimous in their opinion that humans are to blame. And so this latest study uh, examined this in-depth study on whether or not the sun 
could also be playing a role in how it's getting, how hot it's getting here on our planet as far as the results go. Well, if you're looking for something that excuses humanity's impact on global warming, the sun most definitely is not it. And then they break all this research down. Bottom line, in short, if the sun is somehow contributing in some minor way to the gradual increase in temperature on our planet, man-made climate change thanks to CO2 levels from industrialization and deforestation is so much more impactful that it is impossible to even tell. And then we're going to wind up with this hilarious headline, the biggest divide on climate change is among the most highly educated. And that saying from this, uh, from this latest research into climate change deniers, they came up with the hilarious and astounding horseshit conclusion that the strongest climate change deniers are also the most educated climate change deniers. If, if this is true on any level, guys, obviously we, we've heard the term over-educated fool. Uh, let's see. Uh, but what is pretty much the bottom line? Quote, we found that where religious or political polarization exist, existed, it was greater among individuals with more general education and among in, individuals with greater scientific knowledge as measured by both whether they had taken science courses and how they scored on a test of science liter, uh, literacy. Uh, the study follows several previous studies that show it is that political conservatives are more likely to dispute the scientific consensus on climate change if they have more education. There are two plausible explanations for this strange finding, according to the researchers. First, the notion of, quote, motivated reasoning, namely that more knowledgeable individuals are more adept at interpreting evidence that support their preferred conclusions. Uh, and secondly, overconfidence, otherwise known as egotistical arrogance. Uh, as the researchers explain, knowledge increases individuals' confidence more quickly than it increases that knowledge. So, if you fail to persuade dogmatic family members to see reason, don't be too surprised, given the terrifyingly real dangers posed by climate change, it is still worth presenting the facts. Just don't assume that deniers are dumb. They are, they're, they're beyond dumb. They are willfully ignorant. They are, they are braying in their self-confidence, in, in their, this arrogant, just, they're, they're proud 
of their anti-science, pro-business, uh, human supremacist, braying ignorance. Intelligence has nothing to do with it. But anyway, I got to wrap up this week's Climate Change Meltdown Roundup rant on this gorgeous day. And get out there and enjoy the world's most beautiful campsite for a few more hours before my eviction notice kicks in on Friday. Smoke him if you got him, guys. Climate change deniers or not, we are so fucked. <laughs>